Hello everyone, I'm Paul and today we're we'll solving problem 3573 Best time to buy and sell stock 5 This is medium and the key to solve it is dynamic programming So let's start We are given an integer array prices where each element is the price of a stock on the ith day and an integer k representing the number of transactions that we can make we have two transaction types. First, a normal transaction is we buy today and sell somewhere in the future. And a short selling transaction is we sell today and buy somewhere in the future. Our job is to return the maximum total profit after at most k transactions. And this is very important. We have to complete each transaction before starting another and we can either buy or sell on one day we can't do both for this example we can buy for a normal transaction on day number zero and sell on day number two here the difference is eight so the profit right now the result is eight now remember that if we sell at day two we can't buy on the same day we have to wait for another day so now at day 3 we can implement a short selling transaction we sell here and then we buy here the difference is 6 so the result is 8 plus 6 meaning 14 now let's say that we are at day number 0 we are here how many choices do we have well we can do nothing and wait for another day we can also buy and start a normal transaction or we can sell to start a short selling transaction now if we don't do anything next when we are here we can't sell for a normal transaction and we can't buy for a short selling transaction so the decision on day number zero has an effect on day number one so first we are here the profit is zero and we have three choices if we decide to do nothing when we are here the profit is still zero because we can't close transactions because we don't have any transaction open we can open transactions but we can't close them now if we decide to open a transaction on day number zero next when we are here we can decide to close transactions so if we decide to open a transaction on day number zero next on day number one we have three choices basically we can either do nothing we can sell normal or buy short we can't open transactions because we already have a, an open transaction so we can explore every different scenario here when we are at day zero we can decide to either do nothing buy normal sell short and then when we are here if we did nothing well we can decide again to do nothing buy normal sell short and if we have a transaction open well we can decide to do nothing sell normal buy short and here we have three choices again so as you can see here we have a decision tree this means that we can solve some problems and then we can use each of these results to solve new subproblems and finally we return the maximum profit among every possible result and this is the result and this is basically the definition of dynamic programming so let's see how to implement this we need to carry some information with us at each possible scenario and this information will include the current index that we are standing at this is the day number remember that we start from zero we also care about the transaction number and this is very important because we can make at most k transactions so we need a way to know how many transactions do we have left and we also care about the current state remember that we have three possible states if this is one we are not doing anything at this day if this is true we are holding a stock for a normal transaction and if it's free we hold a stock for a short transaction now this should work for a recursive dynamic programming approach in python but the constraints are so tight that it doesn't we need to 
implement a bottom-up dynamic programming. In case you know what this is, we are not implementing any recursion here. We are using a three-dimensional DP array to store every state. We have one dimension for the current index, another one for the current transaction, and another one for the current state. So now let's see how to code this and hopefully you will get the idea. N is the length of prices. And now we can build our three dimensional DP array. Remember that DPITS is the maximum profit that we can get at some day, some transaction number and for the corresponding state. We have three possible states. We are using number zero for not holding, number one for holding normal, and number two for holding short. So we are building this from the inside to the outside. We have an array with minus infinity times three, and we are using minus infinity by default because we are trying to get the maximum possible profit. We want this for t in range k plus one, and we are using plus one because we want to include k, and we want an array with this for every index new range n. So now we have our 3D DP and we can set the initial values. DP 0, 0, 0 is initially 0. This is the case in which we skip the current day. Skip day. Now DP 0, 0, 1. In this case, here we need to store the maximum profit for day zero, transaction number zero, and if we are holding a normal transaction. So the maximum profit in this case is minus price is zero because we are holding this normal transaction. So this is the current maximum profit at this point. And just to be clear, this is we open a normal transaction. Now DP002 zero, zero, is prices zero. In this case, we open a short transaction. Now we need to iterate every combination of days and transactions starting from day number one because we already have the information of day zero. So for I in range from one to N and for every transaction in range K plus one. We are using plus one because we want to include k. First, we have the scenarios with no changes. For example, dp i t zero is the same information from the day before, dp i minus one t zero. And this is only for state number zero, but we have two more states. So we can do the same for state number one and for state number two. And this is fine, for example, up here. We are maintaining the same profit that we got the day before and for the same state, meaning we are keeping a normal transaction that we had the day before. Now, what if we are coming from a state of zero in the day before? Well, in this case, we could open a new normal transaction. So we will say that this is the maximum between this and the pi minus one, the same d and zero. Here we are picking zero because if we open a normal transaction, we have to come from a state of zero. Remember that we use zero for not holding anything. And here we need to add the corresponding profit for opening a normal transaction. Remember what we did up here. We need to subtract the current price. And just to be clear, this is open normal. Now we are doing something very similar for short. We take the maximum between what we have in state two and this plus price is side, which is the profit for open short. 
Now, if the current transaction number is different from zero, this means that we can close transactions. And we are storing the results of closed transactions in dpid0. So, first we can start with the normal transaction. This will be the maximum between what we already have here and dp for the day before the previous transaction and state one because we are at a normal transaction and here we need to add the profit for closing a normal transaction so we add the prices i before when we were opening this we subtracted the corresponding price and now we are adding the corresponding price this is for close normal now this is fine but maybe it's best to close a short transaction here so we can say that this is the maximum between this and dpi minus one um t minus one two and the corresponding profit for closing a short transaction meaning minus prices i and just to be clear this is close short so now the question is where do we have the maximum profit well we know that we need to look at the last day we don't know what is the transaction number and we need to look at state number zero meaning the last transaction is already closed now what is the right t well we don't know so we can iterate every possible t for t in range k plus one and we are keeping the maximum value here and finally we return this so this is the entire code now let's submit this as you can see this works and it's very efficient here time complexity is big of n times k because of this nested for loop and space complexity is the same because we have a three-dimensional DP array, but we only have three possible states. This is a constant number, so overall space is also big O of n times k. And if we take a look at what's happening here, we are always comparing the current day with the previous day. This means that we can remove the dimension of day, keep only these two dimensions, and implement something called a rollback dynamic programming and that would be overall more efficient but i think that this is more intuitive so i will leave it like this this is it for this problem so if you found this useful please drop a like subscribe and see you in the next one bye bye